Hi YouTube, this is Joe with uh, CaltonCutlery.com. Um, today is a very exciting day for me. Uh, I had a really good month in sales. Ever since I started selling knives, when I had a, a you know a really good month of sales, I would buy and if I thought about it, I would buy a uh, new maker's knife, uh, usually off of Blade Forums. Uh, bladeforums.com I believe in their for sale section they've got fixed blades kitchen knives all that kind of stuff it's a really great place to look for for new makers established makers you know it's a really good place to buy and sell knives anyway so when I have a good month's worth of sales I'll you know pick up a, a, a knife from one of the new makers to kind of spread the good luck around um, lots of times new makers you know they're funding that first year or two usually out of their own pocket you know their 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 sales aren't high enough uh, the dollar amount for their knives aren't high enough plus they're purchasing all kinds of new equipment um, building up their stocks of abrasive belts and woods and steel stocks and and you know they can use all the extra cash that they can get and so I really enjoy doing that this month I had really good sales and so I purchased a knife from Daniel Road uh, at Road Edge RoadEdge.com. RoadEdge.com. Yep. Daniel is a young knife maker. Um, I have been talking to him uh, a couple times a month on the internet, through emails and through the the chat program that we have uh, that Ed Fowler has on his website uh, at Knife Talk Online. Um, you know, encouraged him to build his own grinder. Encouraged him to, you know, pursue knife making. I think he's got uh, he's got a heck of a good start on it, and I'm really impressed with him. Anyway, so this month he had a knife up for sale there, and I thought, yep, I need to buy one of Daniel's knives and see how he's doing. So, uh, first of all, though, Daniel's presentation blew me away. So I'm going to show you what when you buy a knife for me, I always use these priority flat rate shipping boxes. They're a reasonable uh, cost-wise way to ship things. And I've never had the post office lose one. But basically you'll open it up and I of course use the local newspaper as, as padding material. And this one's leaving in the morning so uh, I taped it up just to kind of see what you'll see when you buy a knife from me. used to, I would wrap knives up in old cereal boxes. Uh, hunters, EDCs, uh, anything that had a sheath would get put in the sheath and then wrapped up in the newspaper, you know, to kind of protect it, and then stuffed in the box, packed with more newspaper, and, you know, away it goes. Then one day I ended up getting these boxes. I believe I get these boxes from uh, U.S. Box or something like that. They're cutlery boxes. And you know they're not uh, wood or you know anything fancy, but they sure look a heck of a lot better opening up that box and seeing a knife versus just wrapped up in, in uh, uh, newspaper and especially kitchen knives. Kitchen knives don't normally come with sheaths, so when I started, I would wrap the blades up in old cereal boxes and blue painters tape. It was a very safe way to ship, but it uh, it lacked some presentation there. So now I can use these these boxes and I stick the knife in there one of my business cards a spec sheet you know and it just looks quite a bit nicer plus with the kitchen knives since they don't come with a sheath you shove a cork on the tip you can get uh, wine bottle corks you can I guess you can uh, drink a whole bunch of wine to get the corks that way or you can go to Hobby Lobby and you can buy the corks in packages of like 15 of them for four bucks or so put one of those corks on the tip uh, make sure your padding is is good or add some extra um, from Hobby Lobby also and that knife won't shift in there uh, it's safe to transport plus it looks way nicer so this is how you would get a knife from me <coughs> I received this box in the mail from Daniel today let's make sure you're on camera there yep actually so got uh, got it in the mail, uh, bought the knife on Tuesday I think, got it today, Thursday, you know, two days, pretty fast shipping. But you open this box up, you 
You open this box up and you've got very nice looking business cards. Business cards, a printed invoice. Oh, there you go. Fancy plastic uh, air bubble shipping stuff. And then you see this amazing case, zippered case. Open up that case and bam, there's the knife. I mean, talk about presentation. Kind of makes me feel like, uh, even though I'm glad I don't use the, uh, the old cereal boxes anymore, that, uh, that he's definitely one up to me, one here. Now open up the knife, get rid of the case there, and what we have here is a neck knife. 52100 steel. I uh, believe it's some sort of diamond wood handle with brass corby bolts. Differentially hardened. I'd say probably a six to eight hundred grit hand sanded finish and then uh, etched in ferric to bring out the, the hardening line there. Very nice fit and finish. There's no gaps around the handle scales. The Corbys, uh, there are a couple of spots where they feel a little bit proud but, uh, but overall they're, I mean it's just a very slight feeling there. Um, the bevels are nice and smooth and evenly ground. Um, <coughs> the maker's marks on there, uh, it just says road. Uh, I would prefer the steel type on there, but, uh, you know, I don't think he works in more than one steel. Like I said, the, the grinding job looks great. The knife is straight. The, ed, the geometry of the edge is really nice also. Oh, I measured it here already. Uh, it's at a 332nd inch stock, so 0.9 or 0.092 or 3 or so at the spine, uh, about 14 thousandths at the shoulder of the edge, and 50 thousandths measured a quarter inch back from the edge. So this is a very, it's got a slight convex grind to it. So this is a very reasonable grind for a knife this size. And most of the time on Neckers, you know, they're, they're overbuilt tanks that weigh a ton. And basically, I don't know if I've got a, a weak neck, but I just can't stand to carry something that heavy around my neck. This package right here weighs an overall weight of four and a quarter ounces with the sheath. Um, it's a little bit heavy for me. Uh, my neckers, I like to have them two and a half ounces or less. Uh, it just, that feels quite a bit better around my neck to me. Um, I did some cutting tests on the blade. Well. Okay, see the sheath is, is pretty stiff to come out. And I emailed Daniel and let him know that these rivet holes, you can move those, if he was to move those up about a half a rivet diameter or even a full rivet diameter, that would really lighten up the draw on his, on his, on his sheath. Um, the edges are very nicely polished, look like they've been buffed. The back of the sheath the rivets have got uh, the blacking's been worn off of them and some of them are split and he asked me to sh uh, tell him how to fix that now when I do kydex rivets now I, now I haven't done a whole lot of them I think I've done about 50 of them so far um, maybe more than that because I threw out a whole bunch of them when I was trying to figure out how to get it to work and my first kydex sheaths had a lot of the same problems that this one does and then uh, one day I spent I spent about two days uh, working up a procedure to get my kydex sheaths the way I want them to fit both the fit inside the sheath the release when you draw it um, the ease of the knife going back in your retention uh, and then getting the weight down as much as I possibly could uh, and also of course figuring out the rivets and everything what I use is these dies from USA Knife Maker in just a, I think it's a $40 Arbor Press from Harbor Freight. <coughs> the dies are a two-piece affair here.
you do have to buy one set of dies per size of rivets that you work with. And then you have to modify the arbor press to be able to take them. Uh, you drill a hole in your bottom plate here to be able to put the, the die into the bottom plate. Then you drill a hole in your or drill a hole in your ram and install a, install a set screw there to in, install the top die. And then you just let's see that would be the bottom. So you'd put the bottom down here, run the top in, squeeze it, and it forms really nice. Daniel was saying that he's using a drill press, which I didn't think about that, but I think that would work really well. What you would do is clamp this top die in your chuck, and then mount the bottom die in either a piece of heavy steel uh, and then clamp that to your drill press table and then line it up and then basically use your drill press to do the same thing. Now to get rid of these these splits here what I do is a lot of t you can buy these rivets in several different sizes um, according to the thickness of the kydex that you're going to be using uh, and how many pieces you're going to be attaching. So the first order of rivets that I bought, they were way too long. Now this is a, a larger size for larger like chopper sheaths and such. And I was having a heck of a time, if you grind them down a little bit, you shorten them, and then most of the times that splitting goes away. But I couldn't do it uh, consistently. So basically the, uh, the solution was that this was just a quarter inch piece of cut off steel, drill a hole in it slightly oversized for the rivet, slip the rivet in there, hold that up to your, your belt sander, grind the extra off, pop it out, put another one in, grind it down, they're all the same length. Uh, you can make up these, you know, whatever, whatever thickness that you're going to need for your rivets and that will get rid of that splitting problem. Um, so basically that and he's this kydex is the uh, 0.090 thickness kydex. I normally use the 0.061 thickness kydex. And the draw is it's kind of impressive. Uh, mine, two fingers, pop the thing out, there it goes. Okay, but that's, you know, something easily fixed. Um, the other thing I didn't really care for it was this part right here. Let's see, I'm not left-handed, but if you can see here, that part is digging into my hand. This is a three-finger grip knife, so these three fingers come across the top, and then this pinky comes across the bottom, and it acts almost as a reverse guard. That blade can't go down into your hand too far because that pinky's stopping it. But this part right here, if you were to take and move that forward ever so slightly, then it would fit in the heel of your hand there. Also, when you go to use the knife like this, that's stabbing you. So again, if you're round that or you know move this whole thing in a little bit, change the angle and make this a drop, it would feel quite a bit better. Uh, I did some cutting with it. I took out my manila rope. Um, I did a, uh, it, now it came very sharp right out of the box, took hair off my face. It did have a polished edge on it. So when I did the first cutting test, um, it took quite a bit of force to cut through the rope, which that's, that's more of the polished edge than it is anything else. So I took that edge off and put one of my Smith's 325 grit edges on it. And with my uh, my rope, my test rope, <coughs> one lay of this Manila rope here. This is uh, three quarter inch Manila rope. You get it at Home Depot. It's uh, it's pretty coarse stuff. I buy it by the roll. I think it's 150 foot. So you get uh, quite a few cuts out of a whole roll of it. I think a roll is like 80 bucks or so. Um, with the Smith's 325 grit edge, uh, like I show in my sharpening video with micro bevels, um, the first cut started off at 8 pounds to complete the first cut. It was 14 pounds worth of force to finish the 101st cut, and then it was 18 pounds to do 201 cuts. 
show he had a, a 10 pound that's what I usually do when I'm testing uh, steels either edges heat treats geometries all that I measure the the weight of the first cut and then the weight or the weight of either the 201st cut or I stop when it when you get a 10 pound gain in force to complete the cut uh, a 10 pound gain in force I think if my knife is going to take 10 more pounds to make a cut, basically I'm going to stop there and touch it up because it feels like it's going dull. So anyway, so yeah, his knife did 200 cuts uh, and only took a 10 pound uh, gain in force to be able to complete the 200 cuts, which is really good. Um, I'm just, I'm just really impressed. This is probably the nicest um, new maker's knife that I've that I've ever bought I mean it really is uh, you know and especially for a necker I mean you know I'm really particular about neckers and to me weight is everything on neckers now you know we were talking about this sheath that sheath right there alone if if he was to make them like my sheaths he could take a full ounce out of the weight now his weighs four and a quarter ounces. That would drop it down to three and a quarter ounces just off of the sheath. Um, the rest of the knife, I think I would leave it alone. It's a nice. It's actually designed to be a using knife as a necker, not a pry bar, not a prison shank, not you know a, a car opener, not any of that. It's a, a very nice utility knife in a necker package. And I congratulate Daniel. I am very happy that I was able to buy it from him. Um, I hope he gets to uh, get more materials off the money that I sent him for the knife. And I really hope he keeps making these knives, make some improvements, turn a good knife into a great one. Uh, yeah, if anybody wants to check out his work, it is at www. www.roadedge.com that's r o h d e e d g e.com but a very good job daniel thanks for the knife